In this video, we're going to talk about volume, cubic airspace in a building. And uh, the more volume, the larger the cubic airspace, the more money you're going to spend heating and cooling the air in this building. Now, what we're looking at here is a 30 foot by 40 foot building with eight foot walls and an eight foot ceiling. This won't be, it'll be a little less to cool something like this and something like this, same cubic airspace on the interior of the home, even though it's got a steeper pitched roof. And of course, you're going to have more cubic airspace in the attic. Now that, that could provide you with a lot of benefits. If you live in a warmer area, the attic is gonna heat up, but it's going to, um, the, the more air you have in there, it's going to take a lot more heat, radiant heat to heat the heat up the attic in a larger attic, an attic with more volume, cubic feet of air than it would in a smaller attic. So larger attics, of course, are going to provide you with more benefits in warmer climates and might provide you with less benefits in colder climates where you might want the attic to be a little warmer. Next up on the list is the vaulted ceiling that uh, creates a lot of cubic airspace and volume. And this thing right here can eat up a lot of energy uh, because it's going to require more to heat it and cool it. And this could be a, a good and a bad thing. If you're cooling the air, cold air is going to settle down more towards the floor. So it could actually provide you with benefits if you're cooling the house, but could provide you a lot of problems as heat rises and uh, most of the warmer air is going to be at the top than at the bottom. And of course, you're not going to have this problem with an eight foot ceiling. The next illustration provides us with an excellent example of a lower pitched vaulted ceiling or cathedral ceiling. Now here's a, another problem that uh, seems to be, this is what is in demand now, that is taller walls. You know, if you go from an eight foot to a 10 foot wall, and even with a flat 10 foot tall ceiling, it's gonna require that much more um, cubic volume, more airspace. It's gonna require more energy to heat and cool these areas. Now, another story I'd like to throw in there, that's it for the illustrations, but another story I'd like to throw in is, we were working on a large home one time, and the uh, homeowner, figured out that it was going to cost him a small fortune to heat and cool this house. After the house was completely framed, we were done with the house, we went back and lowered all of the ceilings in the house, all of them to eight foot ceilings. And um, it cost the guy a small fortune. So this is definitely something you need to be aware of if you're going to be building a home in the future. Now, whether or not you want to have 10-foot walls, 9-foot walls, um, vaulted ceilings, um, or other things that can take up more cubic airspace. It's not uncommon to see a two-story house where you have 9-foot walls, um, but in the living room and the dining room, you might have these walls go all the way up to the two-story roof. They might be 18 to 20 feet tall. Talk about... Uh, some heating and cooling uh, problems there, that could be a problem. So look at the entire design of the building and give it some thought as to whether or not you want to spend more money heating and cooling areas with a lot of volume.